Real world textures are incredibly hard to match. Even in software like D5, where your library is endless. Luckily, today's sponsor provides us with real world textures. What's going on team? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today we're taking D5 to the absolute next level. You see, real world textures are beautiful. They're stunning. They have shine, gloss, depth, everything in between. But more often than not on rendering software, we're just limited to what they have available to them. To get started with D5 and Real World Textures, obviously we need to go to Real World Textures. So it's R-E-A-W-O-T-E dot -E com. Real World Textures, just in a short, sharp URL. When you land on the homepage, you'll see there's a couple headings at the top. New assets, textures, models, HDRIs, and brands. So first of all, textures is the biggest element we're gonna talk about because there's 5,540 textures to choose from. You can literally sit here and scroll for days to find the perfect one. Obviously, that's just a horrible way to do it. So if you're looking for a perfect texture, like for example, this floorboard, then you'd click on textures in the top left-hand corner, come down to wood and then select floor. After that, you can refine further by color, area or brand if you so choose, or you can simply scroll down and find the perfect texture like this extra white soft tone or this extra white soft tone down here. Both pretty similar to what I'm envisioning this will look like at full scale. Alternatively, if you're looking for something like this Taj Mahal stone and you don't want to scroll through endless textures, you can simply come up to the top search, type in Taj, press enter, and you'll get your Taj Mahal gold. For simplicity's sake, you can simply hover over it and then hit the download button in the bottom right hand corner. Because my account is set up to default for 4K, I just click on it and it downloads instantly. If I wanted a higher texture, I can come in, change my resolution to 8 or 16K, and then hit download. The same principles apply for their models. So up the top, hit models. You'll see there's 161 different models, from beautiful furniture to fixtures and fittings and lights and pendants. Anything you need for your project is going to be available here at Real World Textures. Last but not least, on the site, we have our HDRIs with 122 HDRIs to choose from right now today. When we're doing interior renders, I like to look for HDRIs with very pale white skies so that colors stay consistent to what I'm truly working with. Rather than having the reflection of the, the sky, the water, or the evening sun coming through. So something like this Lake Switzerland Park 2 just isn't perfect for an interior render. Amazing for exterior, not perfect for interior for this specific example we're talking about today. So something like this historic city park overcast in autumn would be absolutely perfect. If we select the arrows, you'll see what the glass, the white, the metal, and the colors will look like in that HDRI. I'm generally happy with that. So all you do, hit the download button. Again, my default is set to 8K, but if you wanted a high resolution, let's say 16K, just come in, download again, and you'll get a 16K HDRI immediately. Now that we've explored the real world textures site, found our textures and materials that we're looking for, we can come into D5. So let's start with a relatively generic space. I'm going to go ahead and add materials from D5 specifically to see how much of an improvement we can make from real world textures. So to add textures from D5, simply come across the assets in the top left corner and find what you're looking for. Example, wood flooring. Personally, I think D5 has some of the worst wood flooring available on the market, but hey, it is what it is. So Let's use this light brickwork solid wood on the floor. Rotate that zero degrees and increase the size so it's something decent. Next, we want wood as our wood grain in the background. Realistically, we're looking something for close to the timber, just a little touch darker. So in theory, this light yellow wood grain should do the trick. Last but not least, we're looking for our Taj Mahal on our countertops and our splashback. So if we go to search simply for Taj, there's nothing available in D5. So we're gonna simply have to go to our stones and look for something as close as possible. We can try take our gray spider grained marble and manipulate the base color until we get it right. But even as a starting point, that's way too dark. Maybe the ivory gray marble is something a little bit more suited, but when applied, it's just not right. Not having Taj is already proving to be a challenge. The closest I can get is this silver gray hole, which gives me similar streaks to the Taj and then just simply adding a little bit of yellow of an undertone to give me the golden look. Now I'll go ahead and export this image so we can compare at the end. Now that image is exported, we can move on to adding real world textures in D5. And doing so is silly simple. 
First things first, let's exit out of rendering mode and go to the top left hand corner, select our material picker. Let's start with the floors because you know, they're the biggest part of this entire render. We select the floors, we come up to the top and go batch import PBR textures. Find the texture you've downloaded and open up the 4K, 8K or 16K file, whatever you need. Now, traditionally, you'd have to go through and match each individual item to each individual space. So for example, the normal would have to be aligned to the normal and so forth. Instead, highlight them all, hit open. And in a matter of seconds, it's done for you. All we need to do is adjust the stretch on the right hand panel so the sizing is a little bit more appropriate to what we're looking for and leave it at that. We'll repeat the same steps for the stone and the wood. So we'll come into the stone, batch import, find our Taj Mahal, select everything and open. Scale it appropriately as always and move on to the next. So last but not least is our timber, which is super easy to add. Now, personally, I think this timber, if I fly in a little bit, is a bit too dark for the selection in front of me. So all I need to do is go to my base map color, go to my more settings, and slightly reduce the saturation. After that, I'm happy with the floors and the cupboards behind. What I'm not happy with is the fact that I'm still using the basic Geo Sky direct out of D5 and not utilizing the benefits of HDRI. So top right hand corner, HDRI. Next, we click on the default HDRI dropdown and go custom HDRI. Find the historic city we'd previously downloaded, go to the 16K option, select the HDRI and press open. If we import that historic outdoor sky and for whatever reason it isn't working, we have so many more to choose from, from real world textures. Like for instance, this outdoor summer HDRI is absolutely beautiful as well. We'll run this image out as well so we can compare the pair. But before we do that, we also want to go ahead and add in some incredible real world textures objects. To do that, really simple. Once again, let's exit out of our rendering mode top left hand corner, import. Go into the object that you're looking to import and simply select the FBX file. All you have to do is press open and D5 will do the rest. On the left hand side, you'll see my objects and my imported file. So I've gone ahead and imported a whole bunch of different objects. All you need to do to get that imported object into your scene is click once and then click again wherever you want it to land in your project. After that, spin, rotate, place it wherever you want, just like anything you've used before in D5. Once we start layering that, we have our couch. We start importing a table, all the chairs associated with that table, a beautiful pendant light above the kitchen island itself, a coffee table, a rug, which to be fair, the actual rug is a D5 object. The texture is from real world textures and then a wine glass just to add the finishing touches. Finally, let's render out this last image so that we can compare from start to finish. First of all, let's start with our simple before and after renders. The left hand side is our before, the right hand side is our after. I've zoomed in the same amount, 90%, just so we get a better look at the details. I can obviously zoom in way further on both, but I've only exported them as 6K, so we're not zooming in too far. The floorboards is obviously the absolute biggest one. I don't know what it is about the original D5 floorboards, but they just don't look right. No matter what you do, they're never gonna look the part Whereas the real world textures actually start to look like washed out floorboards, you know, like they're meant to be. The cabinetry in the background has a real veneer texture. It doesn't look fake, it doesn't look blended, it doesn't look like a reeded jumper captured on a 1980s camera that's all pixelated and blurry like the original is from D5. Don't get me wrong, this is a half decent wood veneer texture that you can absolutely use, but the real world textures is just the next level up. Lastly, and most importantly, the Taj Mahal. D5 just doesn't have one. So we have to spend forever trying to make something look like the Taj Mahal. Whereas the real world textures has Taj Mahal. You pop it in you, and it's done in a matter of seconds. Now let's look at this image, fine tuned, perfected and exported exactly the way we like it. On the left hand side, we have our raw basic export. On the right hand side, we have HDRIs imported all of the beautiful materials and all of the beautiful objects from real world textures. And all of a sudden, our image goes from basic to amazing. Let's zoom in to 90% once more and look at some of these details. You'll see with the HDRI, it brings out the texture quality, just that next level up. The colors start to blend in better. The floorboards are perfectly aligned to the original texture. The materials in the couch and the cushions are super realistic. 
Now, obviously there's so much more that we can add to this render to make it even better. Light fixtures, paintings on the wall, TVs, the list goes on. But the proof is in the pudding. Real world textures can make your renders award-winning with little to no extra effort. And if you're still not convinced, here's the original D5 exported on the left and the final image on the right hand side, completed, crafted, perfect. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.